excuse me, what's the name of that movie? Oh, Surfer? Chasing the Mavericks. Chasing the Mavericks. Came out in 2012. The, the scene that I love, of course, is, is when, he, when she looks at him and goes, what's he doing? Then he said he came to surf Mavericks. There's no the, it's just called Chasing Mavericks. Yeah, just, uh, he, said he came. Somebody asked me what I was calling. He knows. He knows why he came. So when he got wiped out, he said, it "Doesn't change anything. Give me my boy. Right. Give me my boy." If you've, ever, if you've ever been used of God, <laughs> you can turn this off, man. If you've ever been used of God and you've seen great things, and there's another thing. Some of you are not in ministry yet, in one sense. But you ever see moves of God, you see God do great things in the earth and stuff, and see him get destroyed. You will be a part of a great church or something, you see him go down to church. When you see many things out like that, it's like the people in the in the Bible and Haggai and they and they and they, they go, and Zerubbabel or something or something, whatever it is, Zechariah or how where is that? He goes, How does this look now from the day it was before? It seems there's nothing to you, doesn't it? It's like the dream of seeing a move of God ended. The dream of revival ended. The dream of seeing the breakthrough in your family ended. The dream of seeing something happen to your life ended. How does it look to you now? See, that's what happens. And it's all aimed to kill you just before the moment when you ride your wife. Yeah. you got to know why you came. That's right. And if the enemy works overtime all your life to try to, from the, child, the moment you were born, not every kid was born into affirmation like my son. I was, I've affirmed that boy every day of his life. Like, but he's a different boy than he would have been if I didn't. I know that. He made his own choices. He did. But I provided an atmosphere for him more than any of my kids, for whatever reason. And the things he's doing right now is staggering. It's really staggering. The never be around him is like being in the energy of creativity and greatness all the time. It's scary. You know? And it was kind of like, because he, he's always had some, maybe he didn't have that. I didn't have that. Maybe he didn't have leaders or pastors or husbands or wives or friends or family or especially when you got your butt kicked and you didn't do something right and all of a sudden somebody wasn't there for you. See, I'm going to say something. God was always there and that was the attack of the enemy to forget that the only person that can make it happen is still for you 100%. And he never changed. It's the hardest thing you know, for people to believe, but it's the, it's the biggest thing you need to believe is that God himself never lost a dream because the dream he gave you has no expiration dates. Amen. The dream he gave you has no expiration dates. And you can do something. And, the, and, and I live I li I mean, What else am I supposed to do? Really? Okay. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, I'm in the room of greatness. I'm in the presence of women of God, men of God. I am in the presence of that. I know that. Yes. You don't. <laughs> I know that. You know, we have fun when we live with pastors and we work with teens. We can sit, we sit with them for periods of time. We just spend time finding all the amazing things that are inside of them so that we, they can come alive again and we can celebrate and have a party with them all. And the biggest, the biggest hurt that I go through is that you've been hit and you've been hurt and you've been, you've been written off and maybe even the enemy has made you write yourself off. But the reality is that, that you are born to greatness. You were yeah, yeah. born to be able to be successful. You were born to have things work out for you. And I don't care what has happened to you. I don't care what you've been through. And you probably can say, oh, this guy's pretty convinced of this. You know? <laughs> and you know, you know why? Because I've been there. Amen. And I'm not saying I won't be there again. But I'm saying, I'll tell you one thing, gave me my board. You might not know you're going to get it when you're underneath the water for three minutes. You're trying to survive. But there comes a day when you get out of your survival mode because when you're in survival, something happens to your brain to create certain things about you that actually shuts down your ability to move forward. Mm -hmm. I don't have the notes on that here, but that's mm -hmm. true. You're not survivors. You've survived. You're here tonight. That's yeah. true. Amen. You're here tonight. But things haven't changed yet. doesn't matter. What changes in you will change. If something changed inside of you will change your outside. And I know that's hard to believe. That's why you got to be around this kind of culture, be around this kind of thinking, be around people who think like this, talk like this. You read about it. You find out. You put yourself within that because if don't ever think the 11 people in the boat couldn't have walked on water. Mike was right tonight when he said, many are called, few are chosen. I got a little bit of a different slant. Mike, many are called and few are chosen only because the few stop saying yes. That's all. They chose not to be chosen. God still chose them. Yeah. See, many have called, few were chosen because they refused to believe and stay chosen. 
Amen. They said no. God didn't reject them. They disqualified themselves. Yes. They said no. Yes. They said no, it's not true. A lot of a lot of times because of something you did or something you didn't do, you would you 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 delete yourself. You remove yourself from the world stage. And hopefully tonight and I was able to just encourage maybe you in some way to get back up again and get on your board. Mm -hmm. You can get back up again and dream a dream. Yes. So there's a lot of businesses that, that, are, that are changing the world right now that were failed businesses. <clears throat> Thomas Edison never freaked out when it was 9,243 times the light bulb didn't work. <laughs> he said, well, that one didn't work. Let's try another. Well, that one didn't work. I guess that's not it. Well, that one didn't work. I guess that's not it because I'm going to get me a light bulb. Wow. The thing is, I'm going to get me a light bulb. I'm going to ride Mavericks. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have that business. I'm going to have that influence. If you would open up with the dreams that God's placed within you, when they're not knowing Him right now, or if you do great, then I guarantee you the next week, if I'm from God, I mean, the next week, you're going to start having things open up inside of your life, open up inside of your heart, and you're going to start thinking certain things, dreaming things, because once you begin to turn, and turn towards hope, yeah. you know, and yourself, all of a sudden, God simply will be who He said He would be to you. That's true. Anybody believe this? I do. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, well, what we're going to do, we want to pray for you guys, but, you know, uh, so we take a quick offering for me. Yeah, Would you do that? You want to do that? That's great. Give me a basket. Amen. Yes. You can write out check the desire of all nations. Yes. And uh, I'm not, we are going to do one nation one day. We are doing, um, you can go on the website, look at what we're doing. A lot of things in Nicaragua right now, stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm now living once and for all in the Hawaiian Islands. So God has actually said you're not moving anymore in your life. You don't have to move anywhere in the world to do any other assignments for me anywhere in the earth. You can live in this place. You say, well, that's paradise. great. You just chose paradise. No, I didn't choose paradise. I didn't even want to be there. For a lot of reasons. If I told you, go, I don't blame you. I think I would have been. That wouldn't be the place I would think God's going to fulfill what's in your heart. I can listen to you go, I don't think that's a good choice. You see, God's choice is always the right choice because I'm going to tell you the truth. When you say yes, yes to worship like Abraham, that's the first time the word worship is used in the Bible, by the way. Me and the boy are going to go worship and we're coming back again. We're going to go worship. But what I'm doing is because I'm in love with you, God. And when God said, you love me, he said, he turned around. There was a ram caught in the thickets by its horns. Rams don't run into thicket bushes with their horns. They avoid them. God said, there's no horns represent power. God said, there's nothing I won't do to fulfill your destiny. It wasn't about money. It was about relationships or ideas or dreams or whatever it was. I will fulfill your life because you said yes to my purpose. There'll be a ram in the thicket for you. If this is for me and my glory, I will give you a ram. I will give you a ram, and I will provide for you. I will do the miracle. I'll open the door. There'll be the relationship. I'll give you the download. I'll give you the business appointment. You'll get the new idea. Some of you guys are just in certain things. They're not working in certain ways. God's just going to give you a little shit, and it's going to start working differently. Now, what I didn't do tonight was prophesy a lot of people. I just brought the word, but it's all yet. So, Father, we thank you for the offering. You know, and whatever. We just thank you, Lord, that you're just going to bless me. You're going to bless the desire of nation. You're going to bless the You're going to bless, oh, Lord, the, the, um, the, we have 84 students in a preschool. We have all these things you can read about are going on in Nicaragua right now. We're taking a team down in July. Some of you might go on that trip. We're going to be taking trips down, down there. My daughter's going to Nepal. My daughter is a project director for a team from right, Missions right, Me. This way. She's a project director, and she's the one training the whole team how to rescue girls from sex trafficking. So we're sending her to Nepal. It's about a three thousand dollar trip, something like that. I told her we, my, my wife said we're doing it. I found about it yet the next day, but it's kind of like so we're doing it. So she's going to be going to Nepal um, in a few months to rescue, uh, um, teach girls. I mean, sixteen thousand kids have been rescued right at the border last year alone from sex trafficking. And you go, well, you know, whatever, the, the end of the world is coming. Well, don't let the end of the world come earlier for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay? I mean, they, they don't even understand this stuff, you know what I mean? But I, and then we're going to pray for all the things that are inside of you guys and everything like that. So, Father, I just thank you so much for every dream and every vision that's in this house. I thank you for every single person, oh, Lord God, that's here today. Oh, Lord God, you never say you're too young, never say you're too old. How many of you can say that in the last month, without even realizing it, something's been awakening inside of you? Oh, yes. One, two, three, four. 
I want to know what it is. I want, I want to honor you. What, what, what is it? What's coming? I'm writing books. Writing books? And all of a sudden, bam, it's like a now thing. It's coming. It's just happening. Yeah. It's a awakening. Dreams yeah. are awakening. Visions are awakening. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
start a <coughs> business in Des Moines. Which I don't know how to do. Really? Yeah, I don't know how to do it. But I've been, been running in you since 2005. Nice. Come on. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. Yes. Well, God gave me an idea for a short film. And also <laughs> to uh, rekindle the passion for playing the violin. Which was, it was flatlined. It was dead after nine years of playing. You didn't even bring it tonight. Oh, I know. No. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm still kind of nervous to play in front of people, so we're not quite there yet. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. The gifts and the callings and the dreams and the visions, I'm just saying it to you. It's where God is. They're going to start just coming up. Just going to start being there. Yes, sir. I, uh, I belong to a, uh, uh, not American Legion, but uh, I uh, I go I travel all over to uh, the East Coast and just everywhere. And uh, uh, for example, uh, my brother is a quartermaster of of, the, of a American, not American Legion, but Veterans of Foreign Wars. And I go back there to Norfolk and visit with him, you know. And uh, uh, after, after, they always have a meeting on a certain night, and so I'll go to the meeting, you know. And uh, then after that, they have a big food feed, you know, the, the cooks cook great food, and pay five dollars for maybe a top sirloin, you know, and everything goes with it. And uh, so uh, uh, I, I went out to, to go with my brother and his wife, and friends to sit down and eat, you know, and have a nice steak. And this one woman who had just joined that organization that night, she was a chief petty officer, uh, cook on the, on the destroyer, and she's just standing off to the side, you know, and all by herself. And she just joined that organization that night, you know, and they just left her standing there. And uh, so I said, why don't you come over and have dinner with us? So she did, you know. And after dinner, then, then they have fellowship, you know, and everything. And she's standing over there, and she's just looking at me, you know, just staring at me. And uh, I said, uh, come over here. So she came over, and uh, she said, who are you? I said, I'm Michael Shea's brother. I know that. She said, you look like twins. He's 20 years younger than I am. And, and, uh, Praise Jesus. <laughs> and that's a fact that we do look like twins, and people have bet on that and lost money. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I said, well, I'm, uh, I'm Michael Shea's brother. She said, I know that. You look like twins. She said, but who are you? And then God told me, you know, she wanted to know. She saw something. Yes. That other people didn't see it. That's better. It's the same time. And uh, I said, I'm a born again, spirit filled Christian, and I love Jesus. She said, I knew there was something different about you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, if, you know, if, God, if, if yeah. somebody doesn't see, and, and God showed me something and told me something, if if people around don't see Jesus in you, if not, why not? Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, God's been slowing me down actually the last couple months, but um, in that process, I'm just drawing closer to Him. I'm just learning how to hear His voice more yeah. distinctly. Mm -hmm. And it, it, even in that, I'm in business. I'm an appliance repair business, and I had opportunity to go to a conference slash training uh, classes and, and rub shoulders with the factory guys like LG, Samsung, all these big wigs going to San Diego, this opportunity came up and I uh, had a prophetic word spoken over me a week ago that I'm going down to San Diego. My cousin lives down there. I've got a room to stay in. I've got my own bathroom. Use his car, his bicycle. And here's the icing on the cake. He is actually gay and he's married. And so I'm going to go down there and just release the light and the love of Jesus. Light and love of Jesus Christ and just, you know, just being. Just being who I am, celebrating the gift that I am, mm -hmm. and it's gonna it's gonna impact their environment. And it's, mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it because it's like I, I could not even say anything about God, but just release, release, and it'll come out. It'll come out, and I'm not concerned about that at all. But I know God's going with me. 
So. Once you guys, once, once we all get our identity straight, every day is an opportunity, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I mean, my wife is called a classic, whether it's the girl at Clark's Nutrition or whatever it is, it's just like always just asking for opportunities to give away love, mm -hmm. opportunities to encourage, opportunities. I mean, you can live a full life operating once you realize your identity and your greatness and you were born to love. Mm -hmm. And there's no pressure on you. Once the pressure comes off you to be, because mm -hmm. you've accepted who you are, then all of a sudden things will just start happening in your life mm -hmm. that you never realized before. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying this. Before you say do anything like that, I'm just saying what you're going to find out is start happening in your life is that you're going to understand some of the things I just said tonight. And basically you're going to be able to, you know, realize that you, uh, yes sir, you want to say something? Go for it. Uh, well, you were asking, you know, different things yes, where it's going. And for me, it's given me, uh, I know that I'm going to be doing like a $300 million movie that's going to change the world. Wow. Now that's a little bit more godlike. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> the big dream. <laughs> you know, start with the big things. Don't start small. <laughs> that's what we do. We, 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 got, we place limits based on our limited thinking. And he's saying limitlessness is yes. the way into a God of no limits for you. Mm. That's right. Right? Mm. And that's, that, that's right. In other words, that, that's, that's biblical. So when you wrap your heart around that, you wrap your mind around that, you attract that. You attract that. It doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter. What you believe about yourself on the inside that God says you are, you literally begin attracting that. You literally do. You might go through a season where you're not sure, but once you get that down, then all of a sudden you just expect it. You don't need to see it. You need to be it. And as you're living that, thinking that way, because God said you that way, things start coming. You're going to do a film. It's going to be an amazing film. It's going to glorify God, right? No one needs to prophesy over. They can prophesy, but if it still becomes your word for now, it really doesn't matter. Lots of prophecies don't go nowhere because the people who hear the prophecies don't believe they're going to be realized in their life right. at a gut level. They don't realize that. Right. They don't. Right. You know, so they're hoping for another word to tell them something that God already said, and they're not going to be able to get there until they really embrace what God said now. God said you're going to do this, God said you're going to do this. If it's really God, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, and dreams, I'm, I'm just telling you, I mean, like I said, they have no expression there. And the things that have been latent inside of you, God didn't forget it. And it is true, when you turn up, if you want to make God happy, you know, who wants to make God happy? Amen. What's the first thing about making God happy? Prayer? No. Love. Worship? No. Love. Fasting? No. Obedience? Obedience? So if I do all these things, then I make God happy. Why don't you do the thing that God said to do to make him happy? God said, without faith, it is impossible to please me. The word please means to entirely gratify. So if you want to entirely gratify God, the first thing you need to do is believe things about him. That makes him happy because he's being honored because that's who I really am. So really, faith. And who God is, yes. is the foundation of your pleasure of pleasing God. Yeah. Because it's, if it's not, it's not going to be you anyway in something, it has to be God. So the thing is like, then you can't even know how that works, because you're so busy doing it yourself, you're not living in faith anyway. You really don't believe it. You can tell when you wake up in the morning, there's a difference. When you wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning and you have no money, and you need, let's say I need... Uh, Seven grand by Monday, which I do. Let's say I need seven thousand dollars by Monday, and there's no way I can do that. It's because it's for love things. It's for love. It's not for me right now. It's kind of like okay. So then, what do you do? If I wake up and go, oh, I don't have it. Where is it? Where's it coming from? How am I going to get it? I've already started the day off wrong. If I start up the day saying like I have it, I have more than enough. And I am more than enough, and God's going to help me, and it's all going to work out. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you don't have a clue yet how it's going to work out. Yep. Yeah. So you have all the anxiety, you have, you have fear, you have this kid, you have that. What am I going to tell these people? You're already prophesying that it's not going to happen because you're scared to death. See, this guy said, I'm afraid. So the thing is, faith is not the absence of fear. Fear will be there. Fear. Contrary winds. It's all it's part of life. Yeah. If they're not going to go away, so you can just dance on the water. No, you choose to walk on the water, there'll always be 11 people in the boat thinking you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Peter was only willing to do something based on God's word that they could have done too. Mm -hmm. Peter asked for the limitlessness. Mm -hmm. Peter asked for it. He said, if it be you, let me do the impossible. Then I know it's you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Well, the 11 people said, hey, they were great men of God, but they lived limited. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Peter asked God to go out on the water. He said, if it be you, be you, call me to do something that's impossible. If you're working in my life, ask me to do something that's impossible. You ever do that one before? Yeah. Ask him to do something. Ask him. Okay, God, ask me to do something impossible. I didn't say to give something impossible. I said, do something. You, your life, do something impossible. Do something you cannot do in the natural. Be something you can never imagine you can be and what your father told you couldn't be. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be something beyond what you already are now. Do something beyond what you've already done before. Yep. But ask God, bid me come, bid me come, bid me come to the impossible. Then I know it's you. Come. That wasn't very much music, very much prophetic going on there. He just said, come on. Bid me come on. You didn't even tell me how to do this. Yes. Come. You figure it out. Yeah. I mean, figure it out. No one's ever done it before. Mm. This is the time you do things that no one's ever done before. Amen. Don't you get it? Yeah. Amen. Don't you get it? Wow. Yeah. It's not your, but it's not somebody else's biography. It's your autobiography you're writing right now. Come on, get happy. Okay, I know you guys got to go, but let's, who wants prayer? Okay, let's all pray. Let's set some people up there. Who likes prayer? Who's, anybody got power? Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Strange feeling in the room, you know. He's got power. <laughs> Do I have power? <laughs> but, 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 all right, we're gonna, okay, the Spirit of God's going to come. You ready? He said, how can you say that? What am I supposed to say? He's not going to come. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I just got to mention my mouth to make sure that I don't breathe on people. <laughs> I got these. These are sugar free. These are perfect if you got any type of. You don't want sugar. These mints taste one. No sugar, no carbs. Off the chart. Somebody invented a no sugar, no carb mint that's better than any other mint. Somebody invented a furniture polish that didn't have alcohol in it that's better than any furniture polish. Somebody invented a bow and arrow. Somebody invented a bow and arrow. Somebody invented a bow and arrow. That has never been, been invented before. The millionaires. Why do you think everything's been invented? You see, there's a lie inside of us. It's already been said. It's already been written. Why well, write a book? Someone's already done it. And I should have wrote it two years ago because the one I was going to write, I read last week. So you always got this stuff coming at you to say, what's the matter with you? Uh, you're fine. What? God's loving you. God's loving you right where you are. Enjoy yourself. Just receive from God. Enjoy yourself. Don't figure it out. Just relax. <laughs> people go, she's out of order. She's doing fine. That's right. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Okay, now. Yeah. Okay, look. I know you got to go so you can go home there. We're going to see the way you do it this way. Okay, ready? Okay. I believe. I believe. Well, I'm not telling you to feed up now. But I'm going to be a personal relationship with Jesus. But we want to be It works. I believe. Whatever you want to do, but. I'm not sure my prayer, but. I, I just happen to believe that happens all the time. I also believe. Oh, it's absolutely nothing but the presence of God to start coming on people. And that within a matter of 30 seconds, some of you just sitting here right now will notice an increase of something called him. Okay? That's about 25 seconds to go. Right? What am I doing that? Now, some of you, all of a sudden, something's happened. You feel. Yeah. You don't even know what happened. How'd this happen? Yeah. Yeah. Can you feel? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how did I do that? Oh, well, that's just your gift. No, it's not. It's not my gift. What is your gift? I don't know. That's not it. <laughs> I, I just believe something. All I am is a son. I just believe that his presence is available to people right where they are now. I just believe it. So it's got him and got me and I believe it and I'm not doing anything to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I'm wrong, I look like a flaming fool <laughs> and I don't care. Yeah. So, but it's yeah. still true. Yeah. So what will happen? Some of you start feeling this process. Mm. A guy, guy wants to touch the fellow in the blue over there 
And something's already happening anyway. Right now, what's happening to you? Why don't you tell me? Right now, what's going on, man? Well, I just, uh, hmm? I don't know, I can't explain. It's just real uh, strong peace, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that Thank when you, you said it. Yes, and you can look at look, it. Look, look. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, so it's what I believe. It has nothing to do with me. I simply believe that it's his heart always to touch people now. And all I do is I'm willing to believe that. That's all. But I, I know I can't make it happen. But I also know that it will. <laughs> Say, well, it's not happening to me. Relax. <laughs> you say, but you have to lay hands on him? You have to? No. You can lay your hand on him. You got a big hand. It's easy. It's a big hand. Just lay your hand on him. And what you do is what you do, and that's happening more. See, that's the body of Christ. The Spirit of God's inside of him. So when you pray for him, the presence of God comes over. Now that, what I learned, that's available every day. But it happens in the body, as they say, it's only available when the speaker comes, or the certain move, or the certain Ooh. worship song. And I'm saying it does happen there. Fine. But I can't live there. i got to go home. i got to live in a family. i got to live in it with grandchildren. i got to live with my wife. i got to live with my children. i got to live with people. I believe, I believe Jesus purchased the presence of God, released through the Holy Spirit, if you just simply believe what I just said. So you have to, it's something to apply in life. And this can happen in any church in the world tomorrow morning. That fast. Any church in the entire world. Because it's the same God, same presence, now. And all it takes is somebody to go, I believe this. Have their mind. And all of a sudden, God will come. And the revival everybody's crying out for, will all of a sudden start happening. But it might not look like they like it. But if they're hungry enough, they'll recognize it's him. Presence. How are you doing now? Fine. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it feel great? Come on up here just real quick. How are you doing? Good. Huh? Just relax. Just relax. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So no hands were laid. You didn't have an altar call. I didn't know what he repented of. I don't know, cleansing. I didn't know what he did. I just said God was going to come up here. So, so how are we doing? Now look at him now. Now who's doing that? Himself, the flesh, the devil. Who's doing that? Huh? He's a grown man. He did not come here to act like this. He did. He can articulate. He can talk. He has intelligence. This man is not a stupid man. This Amen. man would not stand up and just laugh right in front of you people like this for no damn reason. My point is this. Jesus paid blood for joy, too. Jesus paid blood for his presence. And one of the passions in my life is that the, pas the presence of God belongs to the people of God. So obviously I'm not popular with religious mindsets. Right. Not that I'm against anything I appreciate, but I think this is good too. But he's not the only one that's experiencing God. Who else is experiencing God? Raise your hand. How you doing? You doing good? Yeah, but they're alive. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> now, think of, now, now, I'm just standing here just hang on to him, that's all. And she's like, what's happening tonight? <laughs> no, I'm thinking you said, no, I can't run out of time tonight, so I can't go through a, you can go to the website, by the way, I think I did, I know I didn't do it. There's a thing called, um, um, all about this stuff, you know, proving from the word of God, all about this in the Bible, where you, where you really want to find it. So you can realize that things like this happen to people, and no one's done anything but stand up here, it's not my face, but you've been watching me all night, no one's laughed yet, so it's not me. And all of a sudden, God is touching these men. And I, all I said was that I believe in 30 seconds the Spirit of God would come. That's all I said. I cannot be blamed for any of this. I did not make it happen. It's wrong for you to have judgments against me right now. And do anything you want. It doesn't mean it's the same for everybody. But what will happen inside of your life, something will come alive. The word that was spoken, something will come alive. A dream and a vision and mind and us. A, an aspect of God will be released into your life. It's not just you feel God. Anybody else? So I'm not getting up because I'm not telling you to get up. I just said, who else? 
You feel God because you, because you're going to commit to the fact when God touches you, you're not going to be ashamed because Jesus paid blood for this touch. That's why I honor it. I honor it because Jesus. You, I mean, you look extremely different than you did four minutes ago. You know, and you're chewing gum. Well, actually, pretty much get blows in the house of God and other. But it's like you know, it's like you know, something's happening to you, and you see. What's happening? You feel his presence and joy. Okay, so some people say, well, I don't want to feel his presence and joy. You ain't got nothing to do with it. It's this person and their God. I'm not trying to make any of this happen. I think it's a very serious message. What's happening to you? It's such a Understanding. Yeah, come up here. Just come up here. All I'm saying, whenever the Bible's preached, whenever you do something, we have a right to experience the God we talk about, experience the God we read about. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Am I causing a problem here or something? So what's happening to you again? No problem. Look at him. Look, look at him. Oh, I'm pinched nerve in my back, I could really hurt to walk and everything, and I just feel it just is released, and yeah. It's called your heels up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how'd that happen? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. The presence of God heals people. Yeah, now, it's true, and you've, you've seen the church people really lay hands on people, you know, grandma, and, I, and, that, and that's, that's, that's fine, too. I believe in all. I believe whatever God wants to do, but the bottom line is what I, I like to see demonstrated. Is there truth without me laying hands on people where you can't at all think <coughs> it's because of an anointing on a man? Mm -hmm. So that you can believe something for your life that belongs to you because of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's not that I have this gift. Whoops, I'm sorry. I have this gift. It's kind of like. <laughs> Well, she has this gift, you know? That's fine. Keep at it. Just keep us praying for you. Bless her. Hug her. Do whatever you want to do. Bless her. Hug her. What I'm trying to say to you is that heaven's available to you. Joy is available to you. Peace is enjoyable to you. I didn't ask you to repent. I didn't ask you to tell me all your sins. I didn't tell, ask you to tell me anything that was going wrong with you. I totally assume that you're working these things out with God in your own relationship. But kids, God, can God touch you before then? Well, I should tell you some stories, but I'm not. Who else? Who else? Just for fun. I know we're having fun. I'm having fun. I'm the guy that's going to drive to Everett. So it's kind of like, um, uh, who else has felt the Spirit of God come on them? Remember, joy is from heaven, depression is from hell. So if you've embraced depression as a lifestyle, you would have a problem with somebody who's happy when you're miserable. So just, just be happy, be happy. Um, nothing flaky's going on. I haven't done nothing flaky. <laughs> yes, sir, what happened? What's going on with you? Uh, I just kind of recently noticed, Amelia felt, uh, I felt warm, but it was like a, a warm in the heart, and I just felt loved. By God, when yeah. just the peace of God. When you came here, someone just yeah, like I've only been here about ten minutes. So. <laughs> wow, yeah. isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful when someone knows that they are loved when they have been all along? Mm -hmm. That's right. And it's just been theology. Revelation. And then all of a sudden, it's theirs. <clears throat> is, is it wrong? Well, I'm going to live by the word. God bless you. But if at some point, the word becomes the work. I just learned about the word, brother. Great. So, what am I supposed to do with that? Not feel nothing? Not. I mean, the Bible says it's called the embrace of the Father. It's called the embrace. The Father ran. Embrace. That means hug. Hugs feel good. You feel God. It's okay. Because He loves you. He's got a right to do it. It's guppy with an erect. It's like anybody, anybody. Now, you, some of you might have a whole different God dealing with you a whole different way. That's fine. Anybody else feel God touching you? I'm just. He already touched you. 
You only touched you. I'm gonna give you the floor again. You made a pretty good person. It's kind of like anybody else, you know. I mean, we gotta give the old people a chance, you know. I mean, uh, you like that? Good. I'm glad you got a heart for the old people. Thank you. I appreciate the young who have a heart for the old. Thank you, Jesus. So you might feel presence. You might feel fire. You might feel a new commitment. You might feel a new strength, a new faith. You might feel something. That's all the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, it might just be all of a sudden your mind is... I mean, for me, when I get touched by God a lot, I just think. I process. I feel the Lord on me to think and process. That's God, too. It might not look like that or that or that or whatever it looks like. That's what it looks like for you. It's fine. Right. It's fine. It's God dealing with you by His Spirit. It's fine. You never have to say, well, I'm not really spiritual because I don't. It's just like fuller. I mean, you've actually put yourself a spirit of misery for no reason. How about the couch back there? What's happening in the couch? How are you doing back there? You doing okay? I just feel, um, <laughs> okay. like, you know, when your body is, your stomach has butterflies, your stomach has butterflies? Yeah, that feeling, but it's all over my body. Yeah. Okay. Right. And people go, what's, people go, what's the point of feeling your butterflies? Are you going numb? Are you feel like that? What's the point? Get out of the, get out of the equation. God's, God's touching us. So you're going to get mad at God because she feels like butterflies by the body? You, then you teach them. And, you, and then you take what I do. If we have this, what I do, then we take all the people out. We just take them out. With the butterflies, you know, with this, with, we just take them out, we go love people. We go give money, we pray for people, we bless people, we go love. All this just starts loving more, and then you get more and more and more of it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, um, I wanted to share. Listening to you tonight, it's just the Lord was confirming to me in my spirit what has been, um, been, the Lord has been steering my heart for the last probably seven months. I just retired from my job. Well, and so the Lord has been speaking to me about the youth mm -hmm. the last two years. And I said, Lord, why youth? Because I thought I'd be working in a church and reach out to the uh, older people because I'm not that young anymore. So hearing you tonight, it's like the Lord speaking to me. Do you hear that? Yeah. And so because this was my dialogue with the Lord the last seven months, I said, okay, Lord, Retiring. Well, Lord, we're going to get the money, youth. This is in the Philippines. And I said, how? I don't have the money to do that. Do you believe in my bigness? Mm. So while, while <coughs> listening to you, it's like confirming. And I said, Lord, why Philippines? I can stay here. I want you to start with your grandchildren. Wow. But they're in high school. I go, how do I relate to them? I don't have the heart of the age. Oh me, I'll give you the heart of the youth. <laughs> How? I'll put it there. Mm -hmm. So, listening to you, and I said, what about the finances? A mm -hmm. little pension, okay, and we have also a life money and a husband. <clears throat> it's like the Lord is releasing me, start the ministry there. <clears throat> You will build up leaders, and the first one you're going to start with are your grandchildren. I have, we have eight grandchildren in the Philippines. So as <clears throat> I was speaking to my uh, granddaughters recently, I'm in Facebook, okay? Those who are using Facebook. The Lord is using me in Facebook to reach out also. The Lord is using the Facebook, scriptures after scriptures and sharing testimony. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting this friend request from the classmates, schoolmates of my Beautiful. grandchildren. Beautiful. I go, I started laughing. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, mm -hmm. what do I do with this young 16, 15 years old? Mm -hmm. And I'm 63. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said, Lord, the Lord said, like you said, the mind doesn't get old. That's right. I'm That's very right. young at heart. That's right. So I easily laugh with the young people and I get really serious too when I'm with my peers. So listening to you tonight, it encouraged me more. Good. Sometimes I doubt it. Is it the Lord I'm hearing or just myself? I always have to test myself. So hearing you, it confirms something in my spirit. Do not be afraid, the Lord says. 
do not do not listen to what you're hearing because it's not me what I'm saying to you is believe in my word wow. that I am a big God and because I see your heart you want to be used by me I'm going to use you because the Lord will use anybody who's willing to be used mm -hmm. and so that like what you said brother that relationship is knowing who God is who he is in you preach it he, he who really so I said Lord I know you and I'm really excited tonight. I'm really excited. It's like the fear. Uh, the, it's not fear, but it's like something like anxiety. Am I going to be able to do this at my That's age? Beautiful. Or what about the money? So the Lord is saying, like you said, <coughs> He owns the heavens and the earth and all the things in it. Like you said, you go, you go to the demons, you own the demons. Go fish up wherever you go. Restaurant. Yes, it is. Because that's what God has called us. When you believe that you're a child of God and you're in the kingdom, mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God, yes. anything you ask in my name, it shall be given to you, said the Lord. Yes. Just Thank believe you. and believe. The number one is to live in holiness and righteousness and purity of the mind. We need to renew our mind to the purity of God. Because to me, what, I, what the Lord showed me is we have an access. It's like applying for a job. You need to, to pass the criteria. Yes. Now, it's not a cheap grace. Do not be committing, committing the same sin. Mm -hmm. When you say, Lord, I repent of my sin. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I will follow and be obedient to you. God goes with us. Turn around, turn around, repent, leave your old life, <coughs> go. Because the Lord will go with us. Mm -hmm. And he shall provide. So that really confirms what I heard. I'm glad we came tonight. Praise mm -hmm. God. Thank you. Yeah. And it's great. When you're saying, when you're, I want to come to people. If you'd like, you know, I do believe in this. I'm not about it. I do believe we pray for people. God does stuff. And so if you say something, it is important. I do believe that. It's kind of like, I don't, if you believe that, and I agree with what you believe, and I believe that, then let's say if I pray for you tonight, there is no doubt about it. There'll be something that happens inside the water the lines of your faith. Absolutely. That part's good too. So I don't, if you, if some people want some prayer uh, along those lines, that would be great. You know, it's kind of like if you just have something tonight, you, you just need God to actually make this real to you. You know, there's no doubt about it. We should honor you and take the time to pray for you and just, you know, and, and ask God to birth the dreams and visions inside of you and the faith to be able to see them come to pass and that you would literally leave your past. Forget, your, forget the emotions that have been tied in those hurtful experiences. Forget that which is behind. Make that decision tonight. You know, and, and, and you know, if, and never think you're never disqualified. You only disqualify yourself to deception. Amen. Yeah, so don't write yourself off until God writes you, writes you off. And, and you got to really listen closely. Never hear him doing that to you. Yeah, God's pretty big. He thinks he can make something out of nothing. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, I mean, you just got to stop believing the right things about God. I mean, I mean, at, at your very, at the worst thing, keep running into his arms. Keep running into his arms. Never, ever try to cover yourself from yourself. And then go cover yourself from God. Stand naked and not ashamed before God. Be real about yourself before God. Find safe places and people you can be real about yourself with them. You know, who will love you for who you are in your mess. And allow, and allow life to flow. I mean, I mean, yes. take control of your life. Mm -hmm. Take control of your destiny. Mm -hmm. Take control of your calling. You know, you have every right to. Yep. You're not a loser. You're not a failure. You were born from above to display the above. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. Anyway. What you don't have now, you'll have. <clears throat> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Take on something that's so ridiculously. Try to make it love. If you look for needs. Look for things to love. Ask God for what. Just, just, just I mean, we'll just do it this way, real quick. It's Ten seconds. My grandkids, grand, that kid is off the charts. I mean, you are great. Let's take it. I'm taking an offering for that kid, right? I mean, that kid is like, look at that kid. I mean, that kid, that's like, that kid is the amen corner, right? There. I mean, I mean, I'll go all night for you, my boy. You really responded. Come on, let that, that kid lay hands on you. I'm just telling you. But here we get to, here tonight. I said, it's kind of okay. Like, we'll do this in 15 seconds, 30 seconds. You can close your eyes. Said, you ask the Spirit of God to touch you right now and who you want to love. What need is in your heart? What hurts you? Praise your heart. What makes you angry? What makes you angry? Like the injustice of, uh, of uh, abortion or the injustice of some of the things that are unjust. Okay? 
Mm. And God is, when it says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the word righteousness is translated justice in many occasions. Mm. You didn't know that. You thought about your righteousness. <laughs> no, it's also God's justice, which is your righteousness. Justice. Mm. So what is, what, is, what is unjust? Mm. What are you angry about? You know, what makes you angry? You see, you know, a child abuse. Mm. War, no water. These guys are doing uh, how many water wells? 100 water wells in one country. They're doing 25 orphanages in another. They're building a safe house here. You can start off with one safe house. You don't want, you want girls to be rescued. Ask God. But like, do it the next couple of days. You read the newspaper. Is there, ask God what causes you pain about the condition of the human race. That's where, that, guess what? That's where you go. That's your gift. That's, where you get, that's an aspect of your life. Not, it's not difficult. You know, it's really simple. You just think about it. Because that's really part of your dream and vision. Stephen back there is a friend of mine, Steve Lawson. He's angry at sickness. He's very angry that people are not involved. And he's very angry that the body of Christ lets him be sick. He has a, he has, he's on a really on a campaign against sickness and illness and disease. He, he, I watched when it began. I, we talk about it. It's something that's gripped him. I don't like people sick. I don't want people to believe that they have to remain ill. Yes. It bothers him. Oh, yeah. Amen. It bothers him. Mm -hmm. So if I talk to him, I know who he is. That's what he wants. <laughs> He's passionate about that thing. And he prays for people. Some of them get healed. Some of them don't get healed. He'll ask questions. He'll study. He's not he keeps getting back on the board. He came to see miracles. He came to serve miracles. See? So that's something in his heart. How about, how about somebody else? Raise your hand. That's really what this is all about. It's about love. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about feeling God. It's about them feeling God, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about all of us feeling God. Mm -hmm. All of us know He's joyful. Yeah, what do you feel? I you hate when um, people are deceived. What? <coughs> when people are deceived. Well, that's wonderful. Good night, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Bless you, my brother. Thanks for coming. Like, a hug. like homosexuality, believing that that's okay. Yeah. You know, the lies that come with that. Yeah. Like, when people believe the lies from the enemy, that makes them so angry. Okay, well, well what this, if truth makes you, if, if truth and error makes you mad, it's good. Yeah. But, if kind of like, if, if ever is anything that comes inside of you, well, you're upset at people because they're deceived. No, not the person. Right. Then you will. Then, it, then it's going to hurt you. That means no. you both. Because the bottom line is... I'm like sad a, because yeah. they are... Because they they are walking in that unbelief, and and I know that they can have freedom. But right, so you ask God for the wisdom to be able to minister to their hearts, so that you can serve them with your passion to see them free, so they don't feel judged and beams coming out of you when you're judging them, right. when you're talking to them. I sat next to a man on that plane. You know the story. The guy was nothing to do with God, nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with me. Sitting on a plane, long flight. And I'm there, and it's before One Nation One Day, and I check out, I think you know this, I check out a One Nation One Day thing, and I can tell right away, I go, so I close it off, and he goes, by the way, what was that? Who oh, wants a humanitarian project? We're working in a nation, so they're doing no God. I go, I go, what do you do? Because I'm a, 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 a professor, I said, what do you do? Politics, I said, I let the guy talk for two and a half hours in politics. The guy was brilliant. The guy taught me a lot. And the guy really understood a lot of things. And it was like, it was very refreshing. And then he goes to me, I'm against gay marriage. I'm for gay marriage. And I go, okay. So we get talking for another half an hour, and I go, by the way, he goes, well, I think we're getting the long wrong up now, don't you think? And he goes, yeah. He goes, you probably figured out now a little bit about me, right? He goes, I'm against gay marriage. So the guy looked at me, and I said, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not for Christians who are against something just because they're against something, without having the love of God in someone's heart to show them why something else is better. Amen. Mm -hmm. If they're going to come in the name of God and just black and white say, this is sin, then where's the understanding of why what they're doing mm -hmm. is hurting them and yeah. God? Yeah. Why, not, why not have enough, a little more love? I said, I, also, I said, I find it very interesting that Christians have a higher divorce rate than... Um, I mean, they have a higher divorce rate than people who don't even know God. And they don't even know how to make a heterosexual relationship work well. And they're the ones out bashing all the gay people.
but they can't even make a heterosexual relationship work well. And you have to have some homosexual relationships. It's kind of stupid, isn't it? And he goes, you're the first Christian that made any sense in my home. I go, I'm not, I'm not for it, but I think, I think it would be rather wiser for me to sit down and explain why it hurts them to not to be doing that, not like God's against it, that's sin, that's this. I mean, like, how about where's the understanding of like coming to someone, building a relationship, and explaining to them because you love them and you know that hetero a relationship between a woman is supposed to be when most of the marriages you know stink. Yeah. A lot of marriages that people have are not good marriages, and we're going to go tell homosexuals that their homosexual relationship is not good and they have less divorce rate than we do. Mm. They were mad at the Jews and they have a lower divorce rate than anybody. Oh, I don't think most Christians are beating up on homosexuals. We just don't want their agenda just being pushed down our throats and having having that political agenda take over the upcoming generation. So, you know how to do that? You know why that happened? Because the church abdicated its role to be the church. It's exactly. a long time ago. Because yeah. yeah. when the church becomes the church, no evil can stand yeah. before her. That's true. When mm -hmm. the church is the church, no evil can yes. stand before her. Yes. The church is walking in love and miracles and power yes. and being like Jesus the way it should have been yes. with each other. So the Amen. world, so they read scriptures, we read scriptures. If you love one another, then the world will believe. But we don't think Amen. Jesus means that. Amen. So we wonder why the world don't believe. And we got the best message on the planet. And Jesus just said, if you don't love one another, then the world's not going to believe. So why don't we look at something we're doing? I ask questions. We're not living it. I ask questions. I just ask yeah. questions to people. And I just say, hey, wait a minute. Why isn't this working? Is there another? Let's talk about it. You don't just blast, blast, blast. I mean, come on. Jesus yeah. said, this isn't happening because of this. Yeah. When my son preached in Australia, a sinner. Preached to the pastor's conference the last night. A man who was about, I am not a Christian, preached to 150 pastors and the largest churches in that city in Boston. Uh, he was invited to speak. So he got up and said, I'm not a Christian. Not intend to be one soon. And he was the speaker to the pastors. And Jed said for the first couple of minutes, I mean, it's kind of a new crowd for him, you know. He's, then he goes, I did dad, the last 20 minutes of that guy's sharing was the most anointed thing I heard all week long. Mm. He goes, I don't know how that works, dad, but it was. Mm. And he goes, and he, he ended up by saying, I want you guys to know something. I'm not a Christian yet. Mm. Yeah, but I want to tell you something. I, think, I, I say, I appreciate you guys being in my city. Mm. You have changed my city. You've changed the economy in my city. You've changed the, 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 the social services in our city. You brought so much good <coughs> to our city, so much hope to our city. We need you, the church, in our city. Well, I, that was from a man who wasn't even a believer. So when the world gets up and says, we're not sure about this, but we totally believe in what you're doing because we can see the fruit of what you're mm -hmm. believing everywhere. I mean, come on, that's a testimony. Yeah. But if we got to keep saying, we're the church, we're this, we do this, we got yeah, that, we got the mess, we got the truth, you don't, they don't, we worship better than you. And that body over there is a seven yeah. on a one to ten worship, and I like ten worship. <laughs> and these guys, they're eight, you know, and that preacher over there is good. They move in the spirit. These guys are religious. Yeah, and we're so filled with that. a non-celebratory yeah. lack of real love for the body of Christ, that's and you right. wonder why you don't have any revival in your own life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's so I made a decision quite a while ago that I'm going to celebrate the body of Christ, love the body of Christ, right. honor the people yeah. of God, find out what's good inside of them, fellowship with people, not yeah. come with my agenda, listen to their dreams, listen to their visions, locate their hearts, and just really do that because I want to, not because I want to sneak in my understanding, my my doctrine, my stuff, but simply right across the board to find the thing that God values in them and call and have it. And you'll tell you the relationships I have with people are a lot different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. A lot different. And you know yeah. what? Whenever you do see that happen, I've seen moves of God. Mm -hmm. I saw it on the island of Lanai because I did that. I saw a move of God on an island called the Nai, and it all came because of that kind of unity, that kind of self-respect, and also respect for one another. I mean, we're not doing some things up the right way, and then we're wondering why we're getting our butts kicked, why the devil's doing this, why there's no revival and stuff. I mean, and then it's just because our minds need to be renewed. I'm not upset anyway. I'm just saying that's just the truth. And so, yes, sir. Well, when I was just a very young Christian, I read this uh, well-known book called Shaping uh, History Through Prayer and Fasting by Derek Prince. You know, the, the main idea was all it takes is just a small number of Christians that are really praying and, and fasting and out there doing something. We can totally change world history, which is the same thing I hear you saying. I don't know that much about Derek Prince, but I know 
I know he's been attacked. Okay. Yeah, right anybody, left, anybody but, does think great things for Doug. Yeah, Doug yeah. is a great guy. And his, his dad has been dead for a while, but it's kind oh, of like... Oh, I didn't even um, know that about I'm just saying, I don't believe a, a small group of committed Christians together praying and fasting is going to change the world, necessarily. You've got to get out and actually do because something. Because they're going to pray so that maybe the rest of them will start acting like Christians so that we're going to change the world. But the reality is, it's kind of like, there might be some isolated instances in history, but there still has to be leaders and people that will instruct people in the ways of Christ and what Jesus looks like. Yeah. I mean, to me, revival is Ephesians chapter 3. It's love. It looks like Jesus and it acts like Jesus. That's revival. You know when the fullness of God has come, yeah. when love is the thing that's really the primary thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because that was God. I love this. Yes, ma'am. I have, um, where, there's eight children in our family, and I'm the eldest, and... Five of my brothers and sisters are homosexual. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, and, huh? That's, that's wow. Yeah. yeah. And I'm saying, well, because, I mean, I, I, it's, a, it's a way that it happened, but, I mean, we all, I still love my brothers and sisters because, because whether or not, you know, one, and I have a brother who's dead from AIDS, and I have a brother who has HIV, and I have sisters who are, are living, uh, with you know, two there's two women in the household, but they're my brothers and sisters, even though they're not saved either. But they're still my family, and that's the way that it works in the body of Christ. Is that even still, we all, I, you know, I, you just look for the good in a person, the good. That what God sees, God doesn't look at us for what we came from. I mean, if, if we were abused or any of that thing, that that's not we're who he purposed us to be. And that's who we're going to be. We're going to. That's what we have to decree over our children, over uh, the generations that that were these came out of dysfunction have to be reformed by God. So that's why I say, you know, I mean, I love my brothers and sisters, and they don't speak to me hmm. because I did tell them scripturally what what God said but that did, but but the, lo the reason they don't speak to me is not because of me it's because my mother <clears throat> who didn't want me to tell them about what God said but I still love her oh, I still love her, her and I still love my brother Amen. Amen. Have, have, you ever, my... have you ever heard of this uh, individual named Rios Mott General Mott from Guatemala do you know anything about him no, no, no. Oh, okay my, my, my thing is this we're here to preach the gospel yeah. We're not here to be reporters of the darkness. Yeah. We're, here to be, we're here to be reporters of the good news. Yeah. And see, that's the hard thing, is everybody's, the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, and most of the prophetic is supposed to call out the greatness of people and also declare the greatness of God. Yeah. It's not supposed to be judging people, right. spending too much emphasis on that. Like, Jesus didn't, so why do we? Jesus yeah. didn't do that. Why are we better than him? That's true. He never did that. That's true. He died. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his message. What, what call Matthew it? twenty in Matthew twenty four, it lists the, all the bad things that are going to happen. What was the phrase you used? The reporters of darkness. Is that what yeah, when, when I, I'm not here to report about all the darkness in the world. I'm here to change it. The Bible. If you want to turn the lights off in this room, it's nothing but darkness. You can rebuke the darkness all you want. You can declare light all you want. Until you turn on the light switch, there's no darkness. It does say in the Bible to expose the darkness. So. Yeah, yeah, but how but how you do that, see some people think that's their ministry to expose the darkness. That's great. And that when was that epistle written? And how many years did they preach how many how many years did they preach the gospel before they preached that? And when did they start doing that? Who did that? Jesus, the twelve, the seventy, the seventy two, the one hundred twenty. Let's start off with who did what, find some proof, because now we have now doctrine and we're supposed to expose the darkness. It's a lot easier to say this is wrong than it is to do what is right. And I think it the one should because people have nothing to go by. Well, there's, there's also a scripture that says that the those that forsake the law praise the wicked, but those that, that uphold the law contend with them. What do you do with a scripture like that? There's a, pla there's a place of doing that, but I start up. I don't start on the old covenant. I start on the new. Well, you think that's old covenant? It is old covenant. It was written in the old covenant. I'm not saying it's not God. So everything in the Book of Proverbs is old. Okay, covenant. so how did so how did God confront the darkness through Jesus? How did God expose the darkness? Now, you just answer me what Jesus did. Well, he, he had some pretty strong words for the Pharisees, for one. Yeah, well, and what, would, the uh, what, did, what, what did he expose? <laughs> I like that. He was exposing hypocrisy. And I like whatever, yeah, what Jesus was angry about, what Jesus exposed. That's true. And in the temple. 
Yeah, what, what he exposed, yeah, you find, God. I'm not going to tell you, you go and study yeah, that corrupt, out. Corruption in the house of God. For what was Jesus? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and what exactly, did that mean? you break that down, yeah. you look at that. John, find out what he John was saying. what starts in the house of God. I, I think that's either what you're saying or what. Yeah. See, my thing is this, I sort of, I, to me, it's like people say we got Job trials today. Yeah, there's no Job trials today. Job had his trials. It's not a, no. no. No Job trials. You know, I mean, people say, I'm in a Job trial. Well, who told you that? He just took a story from the Bible, and the thing is, Jesus, Job was the question, Jesus was the answer. You've got to bring all of your theology back to Jesus. Because yeah. Jesus is... Who was the question? That's well, something, I don't worry about it. Job. It's kind of like, it's, it, it, look at it this way, Jesus was the Word made flesh, right? That dwelt among people, and we saw Him, we handled Him, we watched the way He lived. That's the Word. So there's a lot of people who say, I'm a Word person. I believe the Word. But so why don't you start it with the Word? that was fully God and was made flesh. Start with that. Look at his life, how he reacted to everything, and then you can deal with the epistles. Jesus is the Supreme Court. That's the other court. The Jesus is the final say. He's the Word made flesh. Study it. Hebrews 1, 3. He was the brightness of God's glory. He was the express image of His person. He was the Word made flesh. So all of the truth is in a human being. That's why to me, truth is not cognitive and analytical. I don't spend time in my ministry talking to people a lot, a lot about truth that cannot be lived. To me, truth in the Hebrew, yes. the Hebrew Bible, the Bible, truth is what you experience and what you do. You don't know nothing until you experience it, until you do it. You don't have that truth. Yeah. 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 Doesn't the word say, my people perish for lack of knowledge? Absolutely. And if you leave, absolutely. So what kind of knowledge are they perishing from? They're, well, many of the... Um, excuse me, many of the homosexuals believe that the reason they're that way is because God's made them that way. Absolutely. That's a, but that's a total lie. The Absolutely. reason they're homosexuals is Absolutely. because they're demon-possessed, and the demon has pushed them down that road and put them into that lifestyle. God did not screw up when he made the DNA for a man to love a woman, or, or yeah, and a woman to love a man. He didn't screw that up. Satan has slipped in there and have that happen. And if that truth doesn't come out and be brought into the light, this thing is going to go on for a long time. But God's going to stop it. And that's how he's going to stop it. He's going to bring the truth to the light. So which truth is going to bring revival? Which truth is going to bring transformation? Which that will bring transformation. The but, but but the Lord told me, told me how to do it. He said, gather the churches together. Oh, you do what God tells you. I'm not telling you what to do. I know, you I know, but, but, I'm, but I'm trying to explain to you what what the Lord's feeling is on it. Now He's planning on on changing it around because it needs to be turned. I don't told know, it needs to be turned around. State? What are we talking about here? What law? Are we We're talking about? talking about the homosexual agenda being stopped or pushed back. Well, you know, I think that's what I'm what, talking about. There are countries in the world today, as you know, there are countries in the world today that have completely banished banned homosexuality. And that actually, it's kind of amazing that the atheist state of Russia has more of a biblical position, know. you know, than the United States of America. <laughs> they do. So obviously, in, in some parts of the world and in some cultures, people already have the godly understanding, even though they don't have God in other areas. I'm just saying, with the fullness of God is going to be released, it's going to be in the earth, and all that belongs to the way God should do things. There will be that testimony. But I'm not going to start off with homosexual agendas. That's I'm going true. to preach what Jesus preached, do what Jesus did, because it's going to come my way anyway. I lived, not in the United States of America, I lived in Tahiti, where the last child in a family that's a boy is made a girl. I lived in a country where when you 